Today, we are going on an architectural tour of the single most complex, most fascinating structure in the known universe. And the best part? It's the three pounds of stuff sitting right inside your own head. Welcome to your brain. So let's just start with a number that's, well, it's almost impossible to really wrap your mind around. 86 billion. That is the best guess for how many neurons, you know, those specialized brain cells, are packed inside your skull. To put that in perspective, that's more neurons than there are stars in our entire Milky Way galaxy. This incredible buzzing network is what makes literally everything you think, feel, and do possible. Okay, so having a network with 86 billion parts is one thing, but how is it all organized? I mean, who's coordinating this massive, bustling city of cells to create a single coherent thought, like the one you're having right now? That's the real mystery, isn't it? What's the command center for this whole operation? To figure that out, here's our tour map for today. First, we'll look at the brain as the body's command center. Then, we'll explore the two hemispheres. After that, we'll visit the four main departments, also known as the lobes. We'll even dig down into the ancient, primal brain. And finally, we'll listen to the beautiful symphony of neurons that connects it all together. All right, first stop, the big picture. Probably the easiest way to think about your brain is as the most powerful supercomputer ever built. I mean, it is constantly processing information from your senses. It's running these unbelievably complex programs like language. It's managing all of your body's hardware. And get this, it's rewriting its own code every single day through learning. Now, let's look at one of the most basic features of its design. Your brain isn't just one big blob. It's actually split right down the middle into two distinct but deeply connected halves, the left and the right hemispheres. It's like having two specialized processors working together in perfect, high-speed sync. You've probably heard this before, right? The left hemisphere is the logical one, good with language and numbers. The right hemisphere is the creative one, handling intuition and big-picture thinking. But here's the thing. That is a massive oversimplification. You're not left-brained or right-brained. These two halves are in a constant conversation, collaborating on almost everything you do. The real magic isn't in one side, but in their seamless partnership. Okay, from here, let's zoom in on the biggest part of the brain, the cerebrum, and its four major departments, or what we call lobes. You can think of each one as a specialized vision in a huge, highly efficient corporation. Our first stop, right behind your forehead, is the frontal lobe. This is, without a doubt, the CEO of your brain. It's actually the last part of the brain to fully develop, sometimes not until you're in your mid-20s, and it handles all the high-level executive functions that really define who you are. So what does this CEO actually do? Well, it's the part of you that's planning your schedule for tomorrow, the part that's wrestling with a tough problem, the part that's weighing the pros and cons of a big decision, your entire personality, your ability to think about the future and say no to something you want right now for a better payoff later, that all comes from right here. All right, moving back from the CEO's office, we find the parietal lobe. Think of this section as the brain's master navigator. Its main job is to build a constantly updating 3D map of the world around you and pinpoint your exact location within it. You know when you feel the warmth of a coffee cup or navigate using a map on your phone or even just reach into your bag and find your keys just by touch? Yep, that's all the parietal lobe hard at work. It weaves together all these different sensory streams to give you a single seamless sense of your physical self in the world. Now, let's head down to the sides of the brain, nestled right there behind your temples. Here we find the temporal lobe. This is the brain's great archivist, its librarian. It's in charge of memory, hearing, and one of our most amazing human skills, understanding complex language. As you're listening to my voice right now, it's your temporal lobe that's taking those sounds and decoding them into meaningful words. When you remember what you had for breakfast, or you recognize a friend's face in a crowd, you have this lobe's incredible filing system to thank for it. And our last stop on this tour of the lobes is at the very back of your head, the occipital lobe. This department has one huge, incredibly demanding job, vision. It's your brain's dedicated movie theater, special effects studio, and editing bay all rolled into one. Seriously, everything you are seeing on your screen at this very moment, the colors, the shapes, the words, all of it is being constructed right now in your occipital lobe. It takes the raw data streaming in from your eyes and transforms it into the rich, vivid visual world you live in. 
So far, we've toured the newer parts of the brain, the fancy cerebral cortex where all this high-level thinking happens. But deep underneath it all, there's a much older, more fundamental set of structures. This is the primal brain, and it cares about one thing above all else, keeping you alive. At the very base of your brain, connecting it to your spinal cord, you've got the brainstem. Now, if the frontal lobe is the CEO planning the company's five-year strategy, the brainstem is the power station and life support system, running all the essential programs that you never, ever have to think about. While the lobes are busy planning your future, this ancient region is making sure you have a present. The brainstem is automatically regulating your heartbeat, controlling every breath you take, and managing when you feel sleepy or awake. And working closely with it is the cerebellum, that little brain at the back, that coordinates your balance and movement. They are the silent, tireless engines that just keep you going. Okay, we've seen the major buildings, the different departments, but how do they actually talk to each other? How does the CEO in the frontal lobe send a memo to the archivist in the temporal lobe? For that, we need to zoom all the way down to the microscopic level and listen to the beautiful, intricate symphony of our neurons. It's really an incredible little dance. First, an electrical spark zips down the length of one neuron. When it gets to the very end, it triggers the release of these tiny chemical messengers called neurotransmitters. Those chemicals jump across a tiny gap and then, boom, they activate the next neuron in the chain. And this happens billions and billions of times every single second, creating the very fabric of your thoughts. And that right there brings us to maybe the most important idea of our entire tour. A single neuron, it's pretty simple. But 86 billion of them all connected, that's where the magic happens. That's where consciousness comes from. The brain's incredible power isn't in the cells themselves, but in the impossibly complex and beautiful web of their connections. Think about this. Every single time you learn something new, whether it's a new skill, a new language, or just a new fact from this very explainer, you are physically changing the connections in your brain. You're making some pathways stronger, and you're building brand new ones. Your brain isn't some static object. It's a living, dynamic network that you are personally rebuilding with every experience you have. Just let that sink in for a second. The entire reality you perceive, every sight, every sound, every feeling, it's all constructed inside that three-pound organ between your ears. It is the most powerful creative tool in the known universe. Which leaves us with just one last big thought. Your brain built the world that you see. What will you build with yours?